The Bitcoin ETF could be approved literally at any minute at this point. In fact, by the time you're watching this video, it may have been approved and we could see trading start in just a few days. But will this be a massive sell the news event? Are we going to see the price of Bitcoin correct precipitously after approval? Or is this truly a buy the rumor, buy the news kind of event? I want to weigh up both sides of the story in this video. Of course, first, we have to start off by taking a look at the price action, talking about what the heck happened today, because we had a massive price correction out of nowhere. So let's dive into the charts to get started with. So a wild and wacky day of price action here for Bitcoin. We can see that we had Bitcoin up around $45,500 with a precipitous drop down to $40,500, a five thousand dollar drop in a matter of minutes basically as the market freaked out over a rumor that the spot etf was going to be denied it was going to be rejected interesting by the way can we just take a moment to point out this that we saw the price actually coming back down to retest the 50-day exponential moving average very curious during a major uptrend, during a bull market, that line might be retested four, five, six, seven times. This is the first one. We have not retested that line for quite a long time here for a bit of perspective for you. All the way back in October was when we crossed over that line. So this is the first retest of that a few months later. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Now, why did that happen? Well, a few different things. Two explanations, I think. One is this. We had Matrix Port, uh, apparently a Bitcoin Cash affiliated publication. They came out predicting that the SEC is going to reject all of the Bitcoin ETF applications. Social media started picking this up. People started retweeting it. The price went down. I wonder how much they made from shorting the market because probably a bit. If they were clever, of course, they would have shorted on that coordinated FUD. Anyway, why did they justify that? Why do they think that this is going to happen? Well, we have a bunch of voting commissioners, which are Democrats. Democrats don't like crypto. Applicants haven't satisfied the SEC's requirements, and there is not a political justification to approve a Bitcoin ETF. Not, I don't agree with almost any of that, to be honest. Well, this is, I guess, just a fact. Five voting commissioners are Democrats. Yeah, some Democrats don't like crypto, but not all. Not all. Uh, applicants haven't satisfied the SEC's requirements. No, they have. They have. In fact, we've had so many high-level meetings. I think they've very well satisfied the requirements. And there is no political justification to approve a Bitcoin ETF. The political justification is this. BlackRock wants it. So BlackRock's going to get it. That's, that's the end of the story there. As uh, Scott Melker here points out, do you want to know why the market dumped? Because open interest was mooning with historically high funding rates to be long. 66% annualized yesterday. Huge, 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 huge. We just saw $500 million in liquidations. 90% of those, of course, were the long bets all in under an hour. What? What? Crazy. Crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. This is also part of the picture. Realistically, the market was getting too overheated. Things were getting too euphoric. This is a flush. A big, nasty, fat, just get out of here flush. That's what happened. All we needed was a spark. There was a spark. Thanks, Matrix, for publishing this BS article. Got everybody all freaked out, man. That was the spark to punish the overly optimistic longers. You don't want to long at the top, guys. You want to long when buying that long makes your stomach feel sick course i made a retest retest the 50 day ema that's that's a potential long right there for example james seifert etf nerd this guy says my view is in line with eleanor he's reporting here he says the sec could be signaling to issuers to expect approvals though i'm still expecting official approvals between january 8th and 10th aka early next week okay I also think the gap between approval orders and actual trading will measured in days, not weeks. So that's an important thing to point out here as well. Remember this, that the approval and the actual trading is not the same day. So if it's approved on Monday, trading doesn't start on Monday. Trading might start on Friday. 
trading might be approved to start two Mondays later. We don't know, but it won't be the same day. So keep that in mind. The initial announcement could be very bullish when we see the price go absolutely crazy. Bitcoin's up 20% in 20 minutes kind of stuff. Crazy. Very high expectation right now in the market for something like that to happen. Now, if it gets denied, of course, we had a test run of that today. Nothing good's going to happen. Price will correct very, very fast. But what is interesting is the gap between the approval and the actual trading day starting, because that's when we're probably going to see a lot of the price action happen, where we, that's the news. That's the buy the news, so to speak. We've already bought the news. TradFi's bought the news. Everybody's bought the news on this. It's been so massively signaled to everybody for months that it's coming. Everybody's been buying the news. That could be the final bit of price action, so to speak, in the theory that we're going to see a, a sell the news event coming into play, where you have one final big rally into the trading day, and the day that it starts trading, that's when the price starts correcting. Not saying it's going to drop 50% or something like that, but that's when the bus of expectation runs into the wall of reality. That, of course, is the theory on the seeing the sell the news event coming in. More on that momentarily. Eric Balkunis, the other big ETF analyst, says things you probably don't do if you're going to deny or delay. This is the SEC holding meetings today with exchanges, NASDAQ, CBOE, NYSE to finalize comments for Bitcoin spot ETF issuers. Again, Look at what's actually happening here. The likelihood of the approval coming next week is extremely high. Not certain, but extremely high. We still may see this can kicked down the road until March. Still a possibility, but it looks like from everything that we're seeing right now, all the evidence that we're seeing right now, that we're likely going to see it happen next week or by the end of this week. It could even be by the time you're watching this video. And he's absolutely right. Why the heck would the SEC be meeting with NASDAQ to talk about Bitcoin ETF trading if they weren't going to approve it. All the signals are there. Now, let's talk about the sell the news theory before we talk about the buy the news theory. But before that, a quick note, if you're not yet signed for the Wealth Master newsletter, you got to get checked out. Best damn newsletter in the cryptocurrency business. Every single week, you're going to get this multiple times to your inbox. The latest news, the latest altcoin alpha, the latest DeFi alpha, the latest airdrop alpha technical analysis deep dive altcoin reports like huge value you got to get it checked out you can join our hundred thousand weekly readers and get signed up for free using the link down below in the description thank you very much so sell the news this is the theory that when trading starts price is going to significantly correct as we saw today of course people get this happened you see this red crash here. This is what happened in March 2017 when the SEC rejected a bid by the Winklevoss twins to get a Bitcoin ETF. Price went down 23% in just a few minutes. 10% down today just because somebody posted an article saying that they predicted that the ETF will be rejected. Of course, I know there was a lot of leverage longs and stuff like that. And we had to have a flush out market. There's that too. Okay, I get that. But that was the spark. That was the spark, right? So you got to watch out for that. Just a, a denial would be crazy. But we're not talking about denial. We're talking about actually getting it approved. And then when it's approved, we see a sell the news event. Day one trading comes. Everybody's expectations are through the roof. And not everybody shows up. The party's a lot less popular than people thought it was going to be. Bitcoin options data indicate that interest in the ETF is relatively low with January 12 options indicating a decline rather than a rise, suggesting that investors are not expecting significant price things following the ETF's approval. That's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. The expectation from some is that the market's going to go absolutely crazy as soon as the thing's approved. The expectation from others, this will be like a short-term topping moment potentially for the markets. When $10 billion or $100 billion doesn't show up to the Bitcoin markets on the first day of trading, people are going to be disappointed. There's very high hopes right now riding on the Bitcoin ETF to provide massive liquidity into the markets. And it will. It's just not overnight. As Bitcoin Archive points out here, Bitwise already has $200 million set aside to seed its Bitcoin ETF. He says if the 13 ETF applicants bring in an average of $500 million each in the first week, that's $6.5 billion and search 154,000 Bitcoin if the price is $42,000.
Good luck. I'm not sure those will be the numbers we're going to be looking at. Will $6.5 billion come in in the first week? It's probably optimistic. And I'm very bullish, very bullish, to be clear, long term on the liquidity injection that the Bitcoin ETF represents. I just think that we need perhaps temper our expectations of day one, two, three, four, and five trading. It may not go as quickly as you think it goes. Could. Maybe I'm not being bullish enough on the first few days of trading of this ETF product. Interesting thought here as well. Why, of course, long term, we could see this be quite popular. Uh, Alessandro Atavini sharing this here. He says, one reason why the Bitcoin spot ETF will be used by many is very interesting. One, let's say an average investor wants to $4,000 on Bitcoin. And assuming the BlackRock a spot ETF is like $10 per share. So having 0.1 Bitcoin doesn't sound as cool as saying I own 400 shares of Bitcoin. I know, I know, humans, were silly, we're silly, silly, silly monkeys, but uh, hey, that's the way it is. Uh, Nick Carter predicting the Bitcoin spot ETF approval will have a muted effect at launch. The real move will happen later in 2024 following a marketing rampage for institutional investors. Yes, this is something, great sentiment. Of course, that's what we've been talking about here a lot on the channel over the past few weeks. Don't bet the house, bet the farm, so to speak, on day one trading to go absolutely insane. But... The long-term effect is going to be massive. All of these companies are going to start pushing big time, big time, but it won't happen on day one, right? It's going to take time for all these TV commercials and for all of these, you know, fund managers to start calling their clients and saying, hey, Bob, do you want to buy some Bitcoin? How many phone calls can you make it a day? Not that many, right? It's going to take some time. And there'll be inbound demand, but a lot of it's going to be these sales teams calling people up, talking to these people and getting them excited and getting them on board for Bitcoin. Because the value of getting these early Bitcoin customers for these companies like Fidelity and BlackRock and others is so big because the management fees are going to be so killer for these things. So that's a good reason why long term, again, very bullish short term. That doesn't happen on day one. That takes a few days to boil up. Alex Kruger saying historically in crypto, sell the news is on launch, not on approval. Examples from Bitcoin's modern times. So we have Bitcoin CME futures when they were launched December 2017, basically to the day that marked the top of the market. After that, the bear market started. Backed, you may not even know what backed is these days. It's been a while, but they were. They're a big company in New York, financial services, yada, yada, yada. They were doing some crypto stuff back in 2019. I don't even know if they still are. They probably still are. Anyway, these guys, they launched. That was basically marked again, approximately the top of the market. Market talked about a little bit before that, but still approximately. Coinbase IPO, March 2021. Yeah, basically marked the top of the market. Bitcoin futures ETF in October 2021, again, coincided with the... Uh, El Salvador legal tender launch, once again, marking the top. So we have these really big events. When they happen, price goes down. Price goes down in those situations. Some people saying, crypto quant saying, we could see the price correct to as low as $32,000 next month following the ETF approval. Again, massive, massive hype, big price correction afterwards, all the way down to 32 k and again, it's just based on this simple idea that the hype's just not going to meet the reality in the short term, in the first few days, maybe the first month of trading of this product. So that's the sell the news case, right? How low it actually could go in a sell the news event is anyone's guess. 32K, yeah, sure, why not? Now, the other side of the coin, buy the rumor, buy the news. Tom Dunleavy here bringing up some interesting points. He says, the Bitcoin ETF is not a sell news event. Max inflows coming. Why? Number one, huge marketing push from 12 of the biggest names in finance. Yes. RIAs are now earn their 1% fee on crypto and can entertain their clients. Crypto fantasy will profiting. This is huge. Yes. Yes. Registered investor investment advisors can definitely cash in on this big time. There's going to be, a, again, a huge push from all these sales and marketing teams, a huge push from everybody to want to capture as much market share as soon as possible. Not day one, but very, very big, right? Who cares about what happens, in my opinion, who cares what happens with the price over a week or a month? Zoom out. What happens over the next year? What happens over the next two years? That's where the real money is going to be made. Stop thinking so short term, guys. 
401ks. Uh, do you think Fidelity did all this not to add it to their bread and butter 401k products? Yes, I've already read something about that, actually, how they're going to be uh, bringing that into their 401ks, which is huge, huge access to retirement accounts. Biggest name still coming. We have Vanguard hasn't got into the ETF game yet. And once they see how much money everybody else is making, they're probably going to want to get in. Yeah, it's going to go big, guys. It's going to go big. Without a doubt. Andrew Kang, this is a very interesting point here. Bitcoin at 45K still feels mispriced for 2024 ETF inflows and having excitement. Yeah, the Bitcoin halving is coming up, guys. It's in April. It's very soon. Very soon. Market consensus is that the ETF is long-term bullish for Bitcoin, which is correct, but the front-loading of ETF flows is underappreciated. Consider that gold ETFs have $120 billion uh, assets under management and the average expense ratio of 0.6%. That's $720 million a year in fees. Net present value of these is... 10 to 20 billion. So from launch day, ETF issuers will be fighting an all-out land grab for 10 to 20 billion dollars in future fees where every marketing dollar spent in 2024 is 10x more important than marketing dollars spent in 2025 since once customers choose an ETF, they don't really switch. Very true. Why would you switch? In most cases, it'd just be a pain in the butt. And with asset management, you have a business where customer value continues to increase over time, which means getting every customer counts. A kid that puts in $1,000 today could have a position worth 250 k in 10 years as they mature in their career and the price of BTC grows. And your 1% fee grows with that every single year. Big. When you think about the size of the opportunity, it shouldn't surprise us to see marketing and ad spend on the scale of 2021 bull madness. When you consider the importance of timing for issuers, Maybe we even take it a little farther. It's going to be a bonanza. There is a massive real estate grab coming. I think it's a great way to think about it. There's a huge land grab coming. And all of these different organizations are going to want a piece of the pie. They're going to want to be first. They're going to want to capture market share. They're going to want to capture customers. It's going to be big. It's going to be big, but it does. that does not happen overnight. Fundamentally, this is such a bullish thing happening. Short term, again, we could see a small price correction. Maybe not. Maybe the market really does defy gravity and just pumps anyway. Marty Party here saying uh, patterns emerging. Other funds registered as securities already uh, trading on NASDAQ are amending their prospectuses so that they can now expose up to 15 to 50 percent of their assets under management to Bitcoin. So we're going to see that start happening real quick where all these different ETF products, different funds are going to suddenly amend and say, yep, we're going to have some Bitcoin in there, too. That's another massive inflow area where all these ETF products start adding Bitcoin future or Bitcoin futures, Bitcoin spot ETF products into their overall ETFs. And that can provide billions more inflow. The potential here is absolutely insane for liquidity injection from what's com coming here. And Dan Moorhead, as he pointed out, this is a buy the rumor, buy the news event. He says this is different. This is not the CME futures launch. This is not the Bitcoin futures launch. This is not Coinbase listing as a public stock. This is none of those things. A BlackRock ETF fundamentally changes access to Bitcoin. It will have a huge positive impact. He says, we strongly believe many spot Bitcoin ETFs will be approved. We also believe it's going to happen in a matter of a month or two, not years. He said that back in November, by the way, November 21st. So he's within his uh, prediction here. If we get the January by January 10th approval, he says, I was at Goldman when they did the GSCI. Now everyone thinks of commodities as an asset class. In the 90s, I was very active in emerging markets. Now everyone thinks of emerging markets as an asset class. Blockchain will be just like that. The existence of an ETF is a very important step to becoming an asset class. Once an ETF exists, if you don't have exposure, you're effectively short. By the rumor, by the news. Let me know if you agree with any of that sentiment down below in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video.